All right. In this um, example from chapter 8, it is the fifth example from the chapter, and it's the second example of the two-step problem, problem type that we're working on right now. So in this example, there are two carts, one of which is moving at the start of the problem, that hit each other and then roll up a hill. So from that phrasing, the very first thing that happens to these carts, when we're trying to figure out which step is first, the very first thing that happens to these carts is they hit each other. And so just like the previous situation, the first step is the collision, which means that momentum equation is going to be used in that first step. So just the first step doesn't involve the hill at all. It is just this cart that is three kilograms. We can call that M1 is three kilograms. V1 initial is positive six meters per second. And it is moving, we said that already, um, in the problem. And the four kilogram block is starting at rest. So M2, the four kilogram block, has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. And we're told that they stick together. So because they stick together, That means that V1 final is equal to V2 final, and we will just call it V final that we don't know about. And again, this is the final part of step one, not the end of the problem. Okay, to make it clearer that every time we're using this um, same equation, I'm just gonna write it out in red. So it is the momentum conservation equation because that's used every single time that we have a collision. All right, so when we plug in the numbers, we have three times six plus four times zero equals three V final plus four V final. So on the left side here, three times six is 18, four times zero is zero, so we have 18 is equal to three V final plus four V final is a total of seven V final. So we can divide both sides by 7. And we'll get 2.57. So this V final that we're looking for in step 1 is 2.57 meters per second after the collision. Which means this is the speed just at the bottom of the hill. So at the bottom of the hill. Because the carts have not yet rolled uphill, we haven't even drawn it in, because that happens in step two. And so just like before, the end of step one, the end of step one, is the beginning of step two, is the before or beginning of step two. All right, so, so far we have that the step one collision, we made a picture, we listed the given information, we figured out that this is what we're looking for the momentum conservation equation in red, plugging in the numbers in blue, solving for that final velocity of step one. But that end of step one speed is just how fast the pair of carts together are moving at the end of step one, at the bottom of the hill, and that begins becomes the beginning of step two. So if you need to, you can pause the video to make sure you understand this first step, but I'm gonna have to erase some of it for space. All right, 
So I'm going to draw what step two looks like keeping in mind that we have this result that is at the bottom of the hill. So step two, in this case, is the energy balance problem, where we have this pair of carts that is a total of seven kilograms, moving at a speed of 2.57, meters per second at the bottom of a hill, and that hill has a height h. If we look in the slide, that height is 20 centimeters, which means we'll eventually need it to be 0.2 meters. And our goal is to figure out how fast this um, cart collection is moving at the top of the hill. And so I'm going to call this V final final, two Fs to make sure it's clear it's super at the end of the problem. And we have the before situation at the bottom of the hill. And the after situation at the top of the hill here. So this is the after. Okay, should hopefully be looking like a chapter seven problem. So we can do our standard kinetic energy search, potential energy from gravity, Potential energy from a spring is now in our capabilities. So before and after. Okay, so at the start of the problem, we ask ourselves, are we moving? We look and the answer is yes, we are moving. We're moving with that seven kilograms. For this time, I'm gonna write in the numbers so that I don't run out of space. And that speed that we're moving at is 2.57, and that value is squared. That is the amount of kinetic energy that we have. For the potential energy of gravity term, we ask ourselves, are we higher? At the start of the problem, we're at the bottom of the hill, so that answer is no. And then we ask ourselves, is there a spring? No spring. All right. So we turn to the after situation. We ask ourselves, are we moving? Remember from back in chapter seven, this is never meant to be a trick question. The problem is asking us to find that speed at the top of the hill. That tells us that absolutely we are definitely moving and that final, final velocity is the thing that we're trying to solve for. It doesn't really matter what we call it. We just wanna recognize that it's that velocity that we're looking for. We ask ourselves, are we higher? And we definitely are. So MGH, that term is seven times 9.8 times 0 0.2. And then there's no springs involved. And then finally, we ask if there's a work term. We're looking here for an external push or a pull force. The collision has already happened by the time we have our step two. So there's no longer a force kind of pushing on these things besides just them moving, which is not a separate force. And we're not told about any friction or air resistance, and so the answer here is no work. Okay, so we're going to erase the rest of that part one content. So for that kinetic energy in the energy before, I'm going to plug that into my calculator. So 0 0.5 times 7 times 2.57 squared, oops, it helps when I plug it in in the right order, okay, and we get 23, so for the before energy, we have 23.1 plus 0 plus 0, for the work energy, we have zero. And for the final energy, this is the energy after, we have 3.5 V final final squared plus 7 times 9.8 times 0.2 is 13.7, 13.7 plus zero. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit. The energy before 
is 23.1, and all of that equals 3.5v final final squared plus 13.7. So to solve for this, we have to subtract 13.7 from both sides. So 23.1 minus 13.7 is going to be 9.38. So 9.38 is equal to 3.5 v final final squared. So we divide both sides by 3.5. And so we get 2.68 equals v final final squared. So we take the square root of both sides. And our final result, when we take the square root of 2.68, is 1.6 four meters per second. And just so it's clear, if you are trying to follow along at home, this was 3.72, so I was using that in my calculator. That's how we got the 9.38. It's fine if you had 9.4 here, um, you'll still get 1.6 meters per second. Okay, so that is the final speed at the top of the hill. The way for us to check that it makes sense to us, we make sure that the speed that it had right after the collision, the 2.57 meters per second, at the bottom of the hill we're moving faster. When we roll uphill, we have to slow down. We've lost some of that energy from motion because we've put it into the potential energy of gravity term. So it should make sense to us that the speed after we've rolled uphill is a smaller number. 1.64 meters per second. All right, so like I said, there were some rounding things that I was using my full calculator values for, that if you're following along at home, as long as you get something that ends up being 1.6, 1.6 something meters per second, then we're on the right track here. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to rewatch this one and reach out by email or discussion boards or whatnot. Um, but this is the second out of three two-step problems. And as I mentioned in the previous one, it will be useful to compare all three of these side by side to see how the problems are similar to each other and what differences there really are. So I'll see you in the next one.